what we're going to do now is we're going to start looking at doing an interior render using Mental Ray. And what we'll be doing initially is, because this is uh, an interior render that has windows in it, we'll need to set up a daylight system. So what I'll do is I'll go to my perspective view first of all, as we can see here, and I will create myself a daylight system. Now this is going to be done in exactly the same way as if we were doing this for an exterior render. Okay, there's going to be one or two differences, obviously, um, but essentially, you know, you've got to be careful that you don't create a second one. But in essence, the way that we set up the daylight system itself is going to be exactly the same as if it was exterior. So you see, we've got our everything in here. Um, let's see, I'm going to change this to be uh, MR Sun and this one to be an MR Sky. I'll accept the physical sky thing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it manually and just make sure that in actual fact where I'm looking the sun is going to be pointing directly into the into the window. So you can see I'm just manipulating things here and maybe I'll move the daylight system across a little bit. There we go. And what that will ensure is that I've just got light coming directly into my scene through the window there. Uh, maybe I'll just pull it down a little bit further. Let's see, just a little bit further. There we go. And then I'll go to my render setup and I'll check my indirect illumination. is set just to low for the moment for the precision. And from my rendering environment, I will make sure that I've got my camera view selected, which I do, and my preset will be physically based lighting, indoor daylight, and then I'll just render a quick preview. Now bear in mind at the moment, what we've got here is exactly the same as if we were doing an exterior render. So if we just wait here for a moment, we've got the rendering here and it's doing a little bit of a cleanup. And you can see there's some quite harsh shadows here. In actual fact, this is quite bright and quite white, and then we've got a lot of contrast. So I think the first thing for me to do is just to come back here and lift that light up a little bit so it's maybe not quite so harsh. But also what I need is I need more photons in the scene, and I need them to be bouncing around this interior. So really what I'm going to do now, and this is the departure from the norm, is I'm going to turn on global illumination select my viewport again and then I will just come back to my rendering environment and I'll just do another quick test render just to see what that's going to look like. Now what I'm expecting to see here is that a lot of this is going to be brighter certainly where we've got dark areas here and that's going to be because the light has come into the scene and it's bounced off the ceiling and it's hit the floor and then it's bounced around the scene a little bit more. So we'll see that in a moment and there you go you see this has already become a little bit lighter now, I don't actually need to do a full render to see that what I would actually like is for this to be uh, a lot brighter. So what I'm going to do is I'll start by increasing the number of diffuse bounces in my scene to one, and then I'll give that another quick render. And what that's going to do is with my final gather, it's going to start to even out this lighting a little bit more by taking the value for the final gather here and averaging it with the final gather up there. So we just wait for this to finish rendering here. And yeah, that's looking quite nice now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try doing a full blown render for that. And um, I'll just check one or two things within my renderer. I don't want to try and save the file. And I'll make it quite small so it'll render quite quickly. And then we'll have a look and see what's going to happen. That was a, a render that I'd done previously. Let's look at this new render, shall we? So we've got our photon emission that's being created here, and that's what's called the first pass. We then have the computation of our final gather points, and these are our secondary rays which are in the scene. So this is an iterative process, and you'll see that it's happening, you know, we see the, the, the buckets are rendering, and they're getting finer. So we've had quite coarse, sort of medium, there's probably going to be one other set that goes through here. Yeah, and you can see that these are even finer still. And then once that's done, 
we're going to have our render pass. So now that that's finished, what you can see here is actually it's quite a nice render. It's not bad looking at all. Uh, one or two things that I might want to change in order to just get the quality up a little bit more. Um, in my renderer, I might want to change my type of uh, anti-alias filter to Mitchell, uh, maybe the minimum to a value of one. These are, these are good working values when you're doing a production render. And one thing I might else I might want to do as well is that this is still looking a little bit dark considering there's a very, very bright light coming in here. So what I might actually do is in my indirect illumination is come down here to my global illumination. And I'm not going to increase the value of the multiplier just yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to affect this thing called decay. Now this is something that we have to be very, very careful with because the decay is what gives the lifespan to the photons. Should you, for example, take this decay value down too low, then what will happen is the whole scene will become whited out. And that's because this is the, the decay rate for the photon energy, which is ordinarily on a logarithmic scale. So should you change this too much, you will get yourself into difficulties. So I'm just going to test and see what this looks like by pressing the render button, although I won't make you wait for all of that. So we can see now that by changing the values of the decay, we're actually getting a much brighter scene. My only problem now is that I'm, I'm beginning to feel that maybe this is getting a little bit too bright here by the window. But to be honest with you, that's kind of offset by the fact that the rest of this room is now looking wonderfully light. So what I might try doing now is I'm going to sort of do a balancing act between the decay rate and also my diffuse bounces. So I'll increase that by one again and I'll press render another time and we'll have a look at the result that we get from that. So we can see now that our scene is actually that little bit lighter here. But one problem I'm now seeing is that I'm beginning to lose shadow detail in here. So in actual fact, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try, again, part of this balancing act, I'm going to reduce my diffuse bounces back down to one, and I'll come back down to my light properties, to my decay, and my multiplier. Now, what I'm going to try here with this one is I'm going to try upping the multiplier of the global illumination and making that a value of two, and then we'll see how we get on with that. So this is a balancing act. I think I'll probably be staying with the global illumination as one, the light properties here is 1.9, and the uh, diffuse bounces as one. And what I'm going to do is I'll do a quick preview render down over here now. And what I want to look at is, is using my exposure control to control these types of interior renders now. So what I can do with this is we've got here with this image control, this highlights and burns. What I want to do is if I up that value too high, you can see our whites start to burn out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce that right the way down. OK, I'm also going to increase my shadow values up and also try and see what we can do with the midtones. So that looks interesting to me, certainly with having the highlights and the burn reduced right the way down. That's actually looking quite good to me. So what I'll do is now that I've done that little bit of image control down here, uh, we haven't played around with the uh, photographic exposure here. Uh, you can do if you want to, if you know a little bit about photography, I should say. Um, I'm just going to maybe play around with, you see, if we get this wrong, that can really just white out. Again, if I go too far, maybe to 11 or 12, it starts to become too dark. Fine if that's what you're looking for, but really you've got to be careful with what you're, what you're controlling here. So I'm going to do a full-blown render here, and we'll see the results that we get back from that. So we can see now I'm feeling a lot happier about this image now. We've got good light areas throughout the scene. The shadows down here are starting to show a lot more. Uh, and I'm really quite pleased with that. So really, if you're going to be using uh, your 
3D Studio Max and using uh, Mental Ray to create your interiors, remember the thing you've got to work with is your global illumination. And also remember that you are in a little bit of a juggling act here. You've got your decay values, so be careful with that. You've got your multiplier values, you know, be careful with that. You've also got your final gather. Um, and more importantly than that even still, you've got your image control over here in your exposure and your uh, photographic exposure control. All of these things come together and, you know, you balance with them and you play with them and you go backwards and forwards and eventually you get an image that you start to like the look of. And once you've got that lighting right and you start to think, yes, I'm happy with that, as I was um, with this image, let's have it just come back up as I am with this image here, that's when you can start to say, right, now let's start putting some materials on this and let's start raising it up and making it start to look photorealistic.